tested your hearing. I'm all right, miss. Pick up everything I need out of my good ear. Look, an automatic steam person. Yep, I call him Steam and Joe. See, what I do is I pour the water in here and then light a match or two underneath here for about 30 seconds. And that creates steam that goes throughout Steam and Joe. And then he just sort of walks like this. He's stealing Joe. What for is he? He's not for anything, I guess. He's just a toy. Is this a toy too? Where did you get this? Didn't get it from anywhere. I made it. But it's the Cardinal's chariot. I imagine you must find the origins of your fortune somewhat distressing. I don't quite follow you, sir. That every drop you drink, every morsel you eat, is paid for by young men killing one another. <laughs> My guns and bullets don't kill people, Mr. Falk. It's people who kill people. Where did you find that argument? Inside a Christmas cracker. Are you trying to look down on me, Fogg? Would that be as a card player, a war profiteer, or as a human being? You damned English snot. I'm not good enough for you, but my money is, huh? Actually, it isn't. Oh. And by the way, I've heard mortally wounded wolverines who can sing better than you. Stop right there, sir. We have business to settle. You see, there's a little engine that makes these stones go around, and that sort of creates some energy that keeps it above the ground, and the screws just push it along through the air. same machine you worked on for Cardinal Richelieu. But I sent that machine away. But the this boy learned it. Have a look at these. These are Aztec. Mm -hmm. The Aztecs had the Phoenix? How did you know what kind of stones to use? By trying out every other stone there is. I, I like doing that stuff. And the jumping through the clock, how does he do that? Huh? He means, how do you make it travel through time? <laughs> it doesn't travel through time, mister. Are you nuts? The only way I know how to travel through time is by staying alive. Gentlemen, on the count of three, we'll each take five paces forward, turn, and fire at will. One. Will you? Or will the war just swallow you up? Seems to swallowed up everything else. What the devil do you think you're playing at? Saving your life, apparently. Well, somebody is anyway. Master, look. The beat selling boy is building the Cardinal Chariot out of a picture. The Phoenix. Yeah, he built it from an Aztec drawing. Must be coming in and out of the fifth dimension. It's the only explanation. What? what? Sorry about knocking you down, mister. You won't tell the company, will you? Well, boy, I'll have to think about that. These have been used. I can only offer you $20. That'll be quite acceptable. It's going to be furious. We're doing this. we to be dead if we don't. You know that he's just put every penny he owns into some crazy gold mining scheme? he could be bankrupt by tomorrow. Yes, that's if he's still alive. You know, he's going to the races this afternoon as a jockey. So, what do we do now? Drug his horse? Here you are, sir. Take my advice. Don't let her spend it all on drink. Yes. How much for this? Twenty dollars. Now, 
now. We have to distract him. With what? I have no idea. <clears throat> Who is that? It's all right, Jules. I'll see you back at the hotel. But I... Jules, it's fine. My dear Miss Falk, how splendid to see you looking so well. I trust you've been enjoying your little holiday. Holiday, Sir Johnson. Stopping the League of Darkness from changing the course of the Civil War. It's hardly what one would call a rest cure. Yes, well, you were acting on your own initiative, not Secret Service instructions. Commendable, but risky. Now I want you back. I'm afraid you're going to have to wait, Sir Johnson. Phileas is in a spot of trouble. Your cousin's problems can hardly be allowed to stand in the way of your duty to your country. This is a rather unusual circumstance. Miss Falk. Just because your late guardian was once head of the Secret Service, it doesn't give you any special privileges, do you know? In fact, rather the reverse. I expect you to follow orders, just like everyone else. Sir Jonathan Phileas is, is seriously disturbed. Is he indeed? Well, knowing Fogg, he's probably brought his difficulties upon himself. They are as a direct result of his helping us in a time of great need. Rebecca, your cousin is perfectly capable of looking after himself. <laughs> According to my newspaper, he's just doubled his fortune. May I see that? Now, I want you to go to Mexico. It seems that Louis Napoleon has decided to invade. And London has considerable financial interests at stake. Thank you, Sir Jonathan. Where are you going? Hello, gentlemen. Looking for a friend of ours, Al. Al, the newsboy. We ain't seen him for weeks. Gave up. We went west. He joined the army. God, it threw him off the train for blowing up the baggage car. Now, where exactly is he? Nice and hot, sir. It is most wonderfully steamy. Thank you, sir. I have a mission for you, Phileas. Oh, do tell me. There's no need to wait for Passepartout to finish my toilette. There is a New York surgeon who has just operated on a young girl who has been deaf since birth and completely cured her hearing. Whoopee. Passepartout, crack open the champagne. And? And perhaps he can help young Al. The newspaper boy, you remember? I doubt that even so energetic a newspaper boy as young Al earns enough money to attract the attentions of a New York surgeon. Of course not. You're going to pay for it. I beg your pardon? You heard me. You've just made more money than you know what to do with. And it is about time that you thought about somebody other than yourself. Really, Rebecca? Yes, really, Phileas. Am I not right, Jules? Of course you're right. We're tired of seeing you mope around in a suicidal fashion, Fogg. It's time you did some good in the world. What a pleasant place to pass the morning. Thank you so much for bringing me here. <laughs> There's no way in. The doors are bolted, Master. Uh, quel catastrophe. Shall we be off? No, Phileas, we shan't. What was it you used to say? Something about never start anything unless you intend to finish it? There is nothing more tedious than having one's words of wisdom quoted back to one. Coming. 
looking for something, lady? Yes, I was uh, looking for a young newsboy. Name of Al. Oh, yeah? Yes. And who might you be? 